Welcome to the St. Canard Files, a Dark Winged Up podcast. I'm your host, Will Santana, and... I'm Mike Russo, and I'm just a creaking mass of bones and hardened arteries. <laughs> uh, Mike, man, everything going okay with you, man? Yeah, you know, we're fine. Everything's pretty good here. Um, how about you? Uh, I'm super busy, man. Had to take a day off from, you know, uh, that virtual panel so we could record today, man. Just been so busy with that, man. Pe- I, people I, have I hope it's... no idea how much work it is, man. I hope it's out by the time this one drops, though. Oh, yeah. I hope so, too, man. But, um, man, uh, what episode are we doing today, Mike? Going Nowhere Fast. Going Nowhere Fast. That's <laughs> I have a great story. Another day in the childhood of Will Santana's story. Here, let's Do get into this tell. real quick. All right. We're in third grade. I'm in Fort Buchanan, Puerto Rico. And uh, at this moment, I feel like I'm the second fastest kid in our whole grade level. Uh, there's this one kid named Sean Poe. He's from Virginia, and he just moved out there from the, uh, for the military, what well, his parents did. And he beat me several times out in recess and PE. And uh, every year at Antilles, we had this big old field day at the end. It was called, like, Olympic Day. And it was like, you compete against your own class first, and they would take the top five out of the class. And then at the end of the day, you would compete against the whole grade level, right? So you the top five out of each class. And I was talking so much trash to Sean Poe on field day saying, man, I've been practicing. I'm going to beat you, man. I'm going to smoke you. I really wasn't. I already knew I couldn't beat him. But, you know, trying to do a little head work in there, you know, get a little get in his head a little bit. So our class, we're lined up for this 50 yard dash. We take off. Boom. We run. He beats me. He he beats me by a good, you know, he had a good about six inches on me, you know, a couple seconds. But I, I was a clear second place. And he's like, Will, what happened? Where you at? I said, dude, this was just a far art class. I just needed to qualify for the final race, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? So I'm still trying to get in his head. But I can see he, he's a little worried. Like, man, what is Will? Is Will really holding back? You know? <laughs> so we get into the final uh, race, me and him going at it against the whole best third graders at that time. Um, Mike, this doesn't have the story you think it's going to have. I didn't even I didn't even start the race, man. As soon as they fired the gun, I fell. <laughs> I was gonna say, did you fall over? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, I fell, dude. Like I had on my cleats and everything. What was crazy is I specifically had Sean next to me on the left, and I had this guy named Eric Campbell next to me on the right. Eric Campbell had never beat me in a race. Shout out to Eric. I haven't seen you in 30 years, probably. But um Eric was like really fast. He lived across the street from me. So I kind of felt like I wanted Eric next to me to also push me a little bit because mm-hmm. he, he was a threat, you know? Right. So me and Eric both slip and it's not a cool running story. He didn't touch me and made me fall. I didn't touch him and make him fall. We both just fell. It was that wet or muddy. I don't know what it is or that location <laughs> of the, where we were at on that football field, but we didn't get nowhere. And, Ah, oh, it sucked just watching everybody celebrate who won. But anyway, man, that's my story of third grade uh, of a race. And uh, <laughs> me and Sean Poe are still friends. He's on my Facebook page, man. So shout out to Sean, man. Cool. Mm-hmm. Great story. All right. So, man, Sean, uh, not Sean, uh, Mike, uh, <laughs> for the people who t- are tuning into us for the first time today, man, uh, where can they find us at? You have lots of options, guys. Uh, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, iTunes, Pocket Cast, uh, Radio Public. We are on YouTube. Um, we, you also can find us on iHeartRadio and Pandora. You can also speak into your um, Amazon Echo. It'll play the latest episode for you there. Also, I mentioned YouTube. You can go there for our videos. We post all sorts of Darkwing videos there as well. Mm, okay, okay. All right, man, uh, I'm only going to give a um, – my shout-out's going to be a little different today. And I see a lot of people still show love when they finally hear their names and call on there. That's really cool. Uh, mm-hmm. But my, my shout-out to my boy Joe. He doesn't listen to our podcast, but he's uh, very supportive of all the work we do. 
Uh, he's always asking them like, how's it going? How's our views? How's our following? So mm-hmm. that, that's love somehow. I just know he doesn't have the time and he doesn't have any interest in listening to Darkwing podcasts, you know? Right. But he follows our page. He'll like things here and there. He'll comment once in a while. But he, he doesn't really care for the podcast, you know? And it's well, not for everybody. It's not okay. for everybody. Yeah, so shout out to Joe, man. All right. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, we got an interesting episode today, right? Yeah, I like this one. It's going nowhere fast, like I said. Mm-hmm. And uh, this is really, this is our first big solo Negaduck episode. Mm-hmm. To me, it's not a top tier. No. It's not, it's not a middle tier. No. It's kind of like a three quarters. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's an entertaining, well-made episode. Mm-hmm. You know, you know? It, it, it has some flaws. It has some good things about it. it it's good. It's, it's, I think it's an under-the-radar episode, but it's not top tier-ish. You know what I'm saying? No, but having Negaduck involved certainly helps. Yeah, and and really, Jim is really moving along with the voice of Naked Duck on this episode. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's absolutely true. I was going to mention that mm-hmm. um, because let's let's do the original air date and production order quick. Um, All right. So yeah, so let's go ahead and get into that, Mike. What's our production and air date? So our air date was Saturday, November sixteenth, nineteen ninety one. This is a Saturday morning ABC episode. Um, we're almost done with those. We only have two more. Mm-hmm. Um, this is 54th in production order. This is actually the latest we've done so far. Okay. And it's our sixth, you know, in production order at least, it's our sixth episode with Negaduck. Mm-hmm. Um, and the first as a solo threat. Um, interesting thing with Negaduck here. I feel like this might have been written earlier but recorded later because, like you said, Jim has really refined Negaduck's voice. Mm-hmm. But they introduce him in ways they wouldn't do again. Like, he gets his own I Am the Terror variant, and he also drives his own version of the Rat Catcher. Yeah. And he doesn't do either of those things again after this episode. (laughs) So I felt like this might have been written early just to establish him, and they felt they didn't have to go back to that stuff. But his voice is so refined, it must have been recorded later, I think. Okay. Um, But it's, it's, for a Negaduck episode, this is, this is pretty good, you know? Yeah. Yeah. so our story editor is Tom Minton, and our writer is Gary Sperling. You know, really interesting. Um, I decided to start sorting the Darkwing episodes by story editors. Turns out Gary Sperling wrote most of the episodes Tom Minton was story editor on. I don't know if they had some sort of partnership or Minton liked Gary Sperling's writing style, but, you know, they also worked together on Revolution of Hon- um, in home appliances, slaves to fashion, and cleanliness is next to badliness. Out of the episodes Gary Sperling did, I think this might be his best one. Mm. And animation wise, we got Sun Wu again. Okay. Mm-hmm. What do you think of their animation in this one? Uh, I'm not really crazy about the animation, but I'm more crazy about the the score and some uh, sound effects they got in this one. Yeah, I'll agree with that one. Uh, there is one thing they do. I really do enjoy, but I'll mention it when we kind of get to that part. Okay. Um, otherwise, their animation's okay. It isn't yeah. anything fantastic, but for, there's some de- fun design work in this one I'll, I'll mention. Okay, so I guess I get to all that out of the way. So mm-hmm. let's start talking about what happens in this episode. All right, so we started off, and we got D- – uh, not DW, I apologize. We got Drake and Goss, and they're at the bank, and Drake is really – Really irritated with this line. <laughs> yeah, did you notice when they pan across the bank, every single teller is closed except one, and that's the one with the long line? Oh, no. Nah. <laughs> no, there's like, the first one's closed, the window's closed, there's an arrow pointing to the next one, there's an arrow pointing to the next one. There's like 10 windows that are closed. Only the last one is open. I so did notice there was only one long line, but I didn't notice like the other one said close. I did not notice that. <laughs> it's like working at the DMV or the post office. Of course, every single register or window is closed. <laughs> yeah, so 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 Drake is mad. Goslin is actually being responsible. She wants to deposit her money in the bank mm-hmm. because she says piggy banks don't compound interest daily. Yeah. Very, very smart, Goslin. Okay, so certain villain makes his entrance. Negaduck. It is Negaduck, like I said, his first big solo appearance because, like we said, um, his appearance in Secret Origins of Darkwing Duck doesn't really count, does it? Mm-hmm. 
No. So this is our first big one. Yeah. Um, so Negaduck has a particle accelerator, and he's going to use it to just to basically destroy all the molecules in the banks and the safe uh, door, so he can walk in and steal the money. Mm -hmm. um, what I do like is he mentions the particle accelerator, and he says, uh, "It's which I Negaduck stole." You think he's going to say he invented it, but no, that's not Negaduck style. He just stole it. <laughs> um, so like I said earlier, he gets two entrances, Darkwing Duck style entrances. Um, I'll mention both of them. The first one is, I am the screeching fingernail on the chalkboard of justice. I am the sour ball in the candy jar of goodness. I am Negaduck. And this is the only time he does that. Yep. And, you know, that and we heard that shrieking. Oh, yeah, we heard that. <laughs> yeah. So, what happens next, Will? Uh, he opens up the vault and then uh, with the accelerator, mm -hmm. and then and then DW appears in the vault, and he gets an entrance. Mm -hmm. Darkwing's entrance is, "I am the Heimlich maneuver for the choking victims of crime." <laughs> All right. Yeah. So then, uh, Darkwing gets zapped though with the accelerator. Mm -hmm. He sidesteps it briefly. And makes a comment how he's too fast for him. But the Negaduck says, not too fast for my accelerator, and zaps him with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So but, Darkwing, uh, yep, go on. Yeah, I was going to say, immediately, he has super speed, but he's not aware of it yet. He's yeah, not he just, he basically gets thrown around the bank. Mm hmm And Negaduck makes his exit. Yeah. Did yeah, you but... notice one of the background characters, his face and head is just like Darkwing? I noticed like two of them. One of them when he zipped through, and then the other one that when the citizens are upset with him, he looks just like him. Yeah, he has the exact same face design, and he's wearing a red fedora like Negaduck. Yeah, there was two of them, man, that I noticed. So I was like, man, what the heck? <laughs> yeah, you'd think they wouldn't let a design like that go through. It looks too much like Drake. Yeah. Um, okay, so Negaduck got away. You know, Darkwing got zapped. So later that night, you know, pretty cool backgrounds in this scene. It definitely sunset. You know, it's dinner time. Mm -hmm. um, Drake is talking to Launchpad about what happened at the bank and he says good thing Goslin started kicking some shins because they were about to feed him the automatic teller mm -hmm. <laughs> Goslin had to save his butt <laughs> um, so, so what happens tell me what happens to Goslin Will she's outside playing baseball but she's on a tree trying to get the ball mm -hmm. and... who's with her Honk yep. Honker plays into this episode pretty well actually he gets a pretty big role mm-hmm and uh, just with quick thinking, uh, uh, Drake sees she's about to fall off the tree, and he goes running to the rescue. But I did not know how far he really ran until LP goes out there jogging, man. <laughs> yeah, she's she's not actually climbing the tree outside the house. She's, like, down the block. Mm -hmm. And she's he blocked. takes off. He catches her and then realizes, you know, how did they get here so fast? He just thinks it was the... Um, you know, all the energy, all the, basically, uh, the excitement. The adrenaline. Yeah, the all the adrenaline. adrenaline. <laughs> but Honker checks his calculator, and no, there's no way anybody could run that fast. Mm -hmm. And he's, you see Launchpad, you know, run down the street, and there's a hole in the front door, there's a hole through a tree, there's five, basically like the, um, like the DeLorean from uh, Back to the Future. There's yeah. basically just a trail of fire leading to Drake. <laughs> Yeah, but huh. then he he realizes it was the accelerator, so he wants to put this theory to a to a test, and mm -hmm. off he goes, man. Yeah, he takes off down, you know, uh, down I love the road. The I love the score while he's running, man. That musical score. There's some decent music in this one. Yeah, that 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 bass that be doom 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 doom. I'm like, oh mm -hmm. man, I like that. <laughs> I wonder if uh, Philip Giffen wrote that for this episode. I'm 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 gonna say I don't know for sure. Of course, I never asked him for this specific episode, but he said he got his hand on ninety out of ninety one. So yeah, this this is a pretty late one. So if he did, it was only a little bit, but I'm sure he did something. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, Drake also realizes the he's moving so fast, even the air is a problem because when he finally stops, the tail is on fire. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. But then, um, what happens after that, though, uh, Mike? Okay, so they have to they go back to the tower where mm -hmm. they coat his costume in a nonstick film. Mm -hmm. You know, basically spray it with Pam or something like that. Yeah. And then we get a whole sequence of Darkwing just zipping through the city. Yeah, he takes off, and that that beat comes on again. Yeah, but you know what also shows up? 
That Disney Plus tampering. Oh, yeah, it shows up. Um, is this when he started teasing the citizens, or is that a little bit later? This is when he teases the citizens, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's gloating. as They're on a uh, bicycle. They're in Better cars. Better get a scooter. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's just teasing them, man, with his speed. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, like I said, there's some shots here where they darken the screen. You know, they cut the frame rate. They slow it down a bit because it's not as bad. It doesn't happen throughout the entire episode, but... For the next five minutes or so, it pops up quite a bit. And it does hurt the episode a little bit. Um, doesn't ruin it, but it does happen. Um, there's, a, there's a pretty funny gag where he decides to help an architect build a building. Mm -hmm. But he builds it like in two seconds flat. But he builds it upside down because he was holding the blueprints upside down. Mm -hmm. And that that gag comes back. Yeah, so he's still on the hunt for, for a mega duck. He's still mm -hmm. on the hunt. Yep. He tries every bank in town. You see an overhead shot of him zipping through the city. Mm -hmm. Really fast. Um, he finally does find Negaduck. And uh, Negaduck is driving his own version of the Rat Catcher. Yeah. Negaduck is going to get his own motorcycle later in the series. That's different from the Rat Catcher. But this thing is basically the Rat Catcher. The, 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 a little bit of the front's a tiny bit different, but it's basically like a black and orange Rat Catcher. Mm -hmm. um, and this is where the worst of the Disney Plus tampering happens. Mm -hmm. Because Darkwing comes up right alongside him and has a conversation with him. And Negaduck has a hissy fit that he accidentally gave him superpowers. And the whole thing is out of sync. And it's dark. It's slowed down. And it really, really, it's it's it, it's the worst I've seen so far in anything Disney Plus has screwed up. Yeah. And uh, for the people who are listening, uh, when we're complaining about this with the animation, we're not blaming it on the, a regular episode. So it no. wouldn't be like this on the DVD or uh, – dig I don't know about digitally because I, I didn't buy it on iTunes or Google Play. but It probably uh, is because episodes of Goof Troop and Rescue Rangers I bought from Amazon mm -hmm. had that has this issue too. Okay, so it's and part since, of like that. So the bootlegs is probably the only way to go then. Yeah, well, I mean this – the picture clarity on Disney Plus is still better. Yeah. But if you don't want that, that kind of tampering, yeah, unfortunately, this isn't on DVD. So what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. Anyway, back to the episode. What yeah. happens next? Uh, we get Naked Duck. He's on top of a building, and he starts throwing glass at Darkwing to see how fast he really is. But, uh, Mike, I got to stop for just a second. I love the sound effects with these glasses being tossed across the uh, off the top of the roof, man. It's it's very Tom and Jerry, like a Tom and Jerry cartoon where the maid says, don't make a mess, and then Jerry starts throwing stuff, and Tom has to hold them. Mm -hmm. the, very, the exact same kind of gag. Also, the music is pretty good here, too. Yeah. Dun-dun-dun. You know, Dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun. <laughs> As he's trying to catch all the glasses. Yeah, and for those of you who've seen The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, think of the very first episode when Will's at the dinner table, and he's, like, making a beat with the glasses. It's, it's really cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. But then what does Negaduck drop on him? Oh, uh, the anvil. Yeah, he's just not quick enough to, hold, to catch the anvil. <laughs> yeah. uh, so Negaduck leaves, and then Launchpad Goslin and Honker show up and pull the anvil off of Darkwing, and we get a plot twist. Yep, he, there's side effects to this. Mm -hmm. What happened to Darkwing? He's aging. He, he has a tiny beard, but he's got one, and his beak is a little wrinkly. wrinkly. Yeah. This is where I like the Sun Wu animation. There's some pretty, you know, pretty neat drawings of an old man Darkwing with the wrinkled, wrinkled beak, the long beard, the bony hands. This is the one part of the episode I think Sun Wu does a really good job with the drawings when he's old. And he gets a lot older. He's not that old yet. This gets worse. Mm -hmm. uh, he tries to stop Negaduck, and he ages even more. Negaduck doesn't even believe it's him. Yeah, so Negaduck is he's making fun of him. He he he's gloating. He does he does a dance. Yeah, <laughs> he he's just all over. He's he's loving this. Negaduck is such a jerk. I love him for it. Yeah, but then we get a cut scene and Darkwing is uh he's on the couch. Yeah, <laughs> he he doesn't want to move at all because he knows if he does and goes too fast he'll just get even older. He's afraid of turning into dust basically. Yeah, but he got a present on the way. He's got a present on the way from uh, Negaduck. What is it, Mike? <laughs> uh, it's a rocking chair with a card. <laughs> I love this. Goslin reads the card. It reads, to Darkwing Duck, my oldest enemy. And I do mean oldest. Ha, ha, ha. And Goslin, <laughs> Goslin goes, that isn't funny. 
<laughs> but oh, he likes to, he likes the rocking chair. He sits in it. Mm-hmm. And cute bit with Honker. He doesn't say a word, but Goslin goes, Darkwing Duck's not just going to sit in a rocking chair, is he? And then Honker shakes his head yes, and then Goslin gives him a look, and then he shakes his head no really quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then Darkwing starts telling old Darkwing stories like they just happened yesterday. And... It was yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I think this is my, my my favorite bit in the episode. LP? Um, yeah, Darkwing says he's going to knit himself an Afghan. Mm-hmm. And Launchpad goes, good idea, DW. You don't want those old bones to catch a chill. And Goslin <laughs> is so mad at Launchpad, she actually goes to attack him, and Honker has to hold her back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Darkwing knits this afghan so fast, it actually, like, lifts up the rocking chair. Yeah. <laughs> but then, Mike, we get your boy, man. Um Watching the TV, they learn uh, Negaduck is robbing oh. the 10th National Bank. Your boy's reporting it. Oh, yeah, we get Tom Lockjaw again. Uh, we had him in um, the last episode up, up in our eye. He's back here, you know, uh, Scott Bullock, as always. This next scene is pretty much over a minute of just Negaduck, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Um, Negaduck's robbed all the national banks, first through 10th. And um, they're live on the scene with him. They ask him for a statement, you know. Mm-hmm. And so Negaduck, uh, you know, says um, he starts threatening everybody and that he's their sponsor now. Negaduck actually comes through the television monitor and threatens Lockjaw. Mm-hmm. Like grabs him right by the coat and gets right in his face. And uh, Negaduck has a um, proposition for St. Canard. What's the proposition, Mike? I like and this. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Basically, this is just Negaduck on like a rant. Negaduck says, "You join the Negaduck production plan. You give him all of your money, and he gives you a small lapel pin. You wear it, he leaves you alone. You don't wear it, and he is not <laughs> responsible for what he does to you. Yep. And nobody can save you now because Darkwing Duck, he's retired. He's done. Mm-hmm. And." Again, Negaduck is such a jerk, but right now he holds so much power. Like, he's taken over the city. Yep. You know, it's the city's his. And throughout this whole scene, you know, as Jim Cummings is just yakking away as Negaduck, the music is so great. Mm-hmm. Like, there's just more great music. Negaduck is Negaduck's in total control, and the scene ends with an extreme close-up of his bloodshot eye. <laughs> oh, it's really, really great. And the iris goes out on his, on his eye. Okay, so... Goslin, Honker, and Launchpad have to do something. The decision yeah. is to get a hold of the particle accelerator. Mm-hmm. Okay. One more scene with Honker I love. Goslin is making unreasonable demands with Honker. And Honker, Honker actually tells her off. I love this. Honker goes, look, Goslin, I'm only nine years old. Molecular biology is a little over my head. <laughs> <laughs> Honker Which is... Honker's coming into his own. I think Katie is doing so much more with him now. Mm-hmm. Don't you, you, I know you agree with me with that. She's oh, yeah. really she's bringing him into a def, definitely he's gotten to be a stronger character. Mm-hmm. Now I got a question for you, Mike. Really, mm-hmm. it's kind of off topic here. Honker says his age. Uh, I'm not gonna say, but the next episode doesn't he have a birthday? Yes, he does. Okay, so I, I I'm I'm kind of curious now. Really quick, uh, which one came first in production order? The next one. Okay, so okay, so so the next one, he was probably eight, and then his birthday. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's Darkwing Duck, and yeah. it probably doesn't really matter anyway. I do like to think of these things too, but eight seems young though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, whatever. All right, all right, let's get back to oh, the right. story. Let's get back to this. <laughs> they have to find Negaduck's hideout, and Launchpad's like. How are we going to find it? It's not like there'd be a big sign in front. And just like in Justice Ducks, his hideout has big Negaduck signs out front. Mm -hmm. Um, And the whole crowd of people are waiting to give Negaduck his protection money. Mm -hmm. Um, So they sneak around back. What do they find when they break open the back door? They find uh, the hamster wheel. Giant hamster wheel. I got one quick question, Mike, before we move on. Yeah. Uh, who was the voice of the character that Goslin? W- yeah, uh, yeah, the kid when Goslin went out there and she was talking to him, and he was like, "Oh, I'm here to pay for the protection." Scott Bullock. Oh, okay, and he was also the voice of uh, Lockjaw, right? Yeah, uh, that little kid's voice. Um, 
I mentioned it last episode. I know you weren't on it, but the jockey, the little, the little jockey has the same voice, and he was voiced by Scott Bullock, too. That's a voice Bullock uses for a lot of different characters. That's how I knew it was him. Okay. Otherwise, it it isn't on IMDb or anything. I just knew the voice. Okay. Um, so Negata catches them and mm-hmm. puts them in the hamster wheel and decides to make an example out of them. Yep. And he broadcasts it on the news. Mm-hmm. He's going to accelerate them into old age. Yeah. As, you know, as punishment. And Darkwing's in his rocking chair, you know, sleep <laughs> with the news on. <laughs> can I say the Negaduck laugh that ends this act before the commercial break is really good? Oh, yeah. I wonder if Jim could still do a laugh like that. I hope he could. I hope he could. <laughs> um, the one at the end of Duck Knight Returns wasn't quite this maniacal. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is a great, this is a great laugh. Um, so I do like what happens when we come back from commercial and Darkwing shuts off the TV and then realizes what was on it and mm-hmm. turns it back on. And there's this great shot of Goslin with these giant eyes screaming, help, dad. <laughs> now, did she just screw up there, Mike? Um, I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, even, even Negadek acknowledges, you know, Darkwing's not going to help you. Mm-hmm. So, eh, she may have. I mean, we know Negaduck comes from a parallel universe. I don't know how it works, but we'll save that for the next episode. We, we'll okay. save all of that. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, creaky old man Darkwing gets off the chair. And again, I love the drawings. He's got these knobby knees. He's got these skinny legs. He can barely walk. He's so decrepit at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, but he saves him. He goes to try. Oh, at least he tries to. Yeah. Um, how does that go? Uh, he can't even get up the stairs, man. <laughs> yeah, because before he can do a thing, Negaduck shows up. Yeah. And the stairs are actually kind of like an escalator. And I don't know how that even works or why that works that way. But by speeding it up, he makes Darkwing even older. And Darkwing can barely get off the ground now. And it's kind of dark. Negaduck steps on his back and like goes to take a picture of him. He's he's like, still gloating and still rubbing it in. Oh, <laughs> Negaduck is so demented. Like he's ready for Darkwing to get, to crumble to dust. He wants to take a whole like he wants to take a pictures of decomposed Darkwing. The mm-hmm. only thing that stops him is that his camera is out of film. <laughs> remember remember film will? Remember yeah. when cameras had film? Back in the day. <laughs> Back in the day. Um I guess now the diff- I guess now if it was done today, his battery in his phone would die. <laughs> so Negaduck has to go to the store to get more film. Yeah. And, hmm. yeah. So they then they kind of figure it out. Uh, it, it was kind of like a team effort how they figured it out. First launch pad and then honker cosigns and yeah. you know launch pad mentioned, you know, Goslin says we have to reverse this and launch pad says reverse, you mean like going backwards? That's some really great thinking there, launch pad. <laughs> um <laughs> But then um, Honker mentions that, and this isn't even true. I could find no basis of this in reality, that Einstein came up with the idea that going backwards will restore your lost youth. I tried to find anything about that, and I think they just made it up for this episode. Mm-hmm. Although Honker mentions that Einstein came up with, with it when he was older, when he wore wristwatches on both ankles and claimed Dave Lincoln was a Martian. <laughs> um, but they go with it, and running backwards does make Darkwing younger again. Um, he saves him from the hamster wheel, but then has to go back through everything he did. Yep. Which includes taking that entire upside down building apart. Yep. And I feel he bad goes back. That construction worker, though. Yeah, he even goes back a little too far though, because he's a little younger and his uniform doesn't fit. Yeah, his voice is a little bit higher too. He sounds mm-hmm. like a Stinky from the Secret Origins episode. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, it's time for our really insane climax. So. Negada comes out of the uh, the store with a whole wheelbarrow full of film and is shocked to see Darkwing standing right there. Yep. So, what does Negaduck do? Uh, he sh- tries to shoot him with the accelerator again. Mm-hmm. Darkwing dodges it briefly. Uh, Negaduck shoots a lamppost. The lamppost falls on Negaduck, but Darkwing takes a huge dose of the accelerator. Mm-hmm. And, you know, right before our eyes, we see him, his beard grows like, Oh, insanely long. He gets these long old man hairs, and he crumbles to dust. Yep. Or oh. does he? No, he's actually standing over there on the side of the street. He's fine. <laughs> he's totally fine. Okay, so I think this might be the most insane thing the show ever did. 
So let me explain what happened when Darkwing got hit by this accelerator. First, he had to do was run backwards to, to get back to his regular age. Then he enrolled in a university, uh, majored in, in molecular biology, along with two scientists. They look familiar, don't they, Will? Yeah, they look like the ones from Beauty and the Beat. <laughs> Dr. Gary and Dr. Larson, exact same designs, but their names are Alan and Gehrig. I know that's a science reference, but I couldn't quite find it. I definitely, if anybody listening knows who Alan Garrick or Garrick Allen is, please tell me because I know this is a reference. Okay, so we had to give a paper in Switzerland. He went to his gradu graduation, came up with a cure for, you know, his super speed. Oh, hold, on, hold on, Mike. I thought they said that their name was uh, Allen and Barry. Wasn't that for like Barry Allen from The Flash? Oh, I thought it was Garrick. Oh, oh no. I'm going to the... check that out. I could okay. be wrong. I could be wrong too, but I, I thought it was uh uh one of them was Allen and the other one was Barry, and I thought it was for Barry Allen from The Flash. Well, I'll research it, and then when this one goes live, I'll leave a note about it somewhere. Okay. Um. So anyway, yeah. So he he cures himself, has to give a paper in Switzerland. He graduates. He goes home, grabs a bag of dust, a spare costume, all of this, which would have taken years to do, he somehow does in a matter of five seconds. <laughs> Five it's, seconds. An, it's insane it's ridiculous but only darkwing duck could get away with it yep um so he takes the antidote drops the dust in the costume and tricks negaduck and negaduck negaduck does he's does something very foolish darkwing yeah. gives negaduck something to drink he tells what? him to drink it negaduck drinks it without questioning it yeah, why would he do that, that why no would sense. he do that <laughs> <laughs> what happens to negaduck He's uh he's not really frozen, but he's in slow motion, like super he, slow mo. <laughs> he might as well be not moving at all. Yeah, his, <laughs> his voice is like you, and then he's done. <laughs> I'm I'm sure Jim did that with his own voice. I'm sure they didn't process that because mm -hmm. I know he can do stuff like that. So yeah, that's it. Negaduck is a statue now. So our ending is great. They put Negaduck in the park. And I guess the intent, because they show pigeons landing on him, I guess Negaduck stuck getting pooped on by pigeons. <laughs> <laughs> and great final joke, Darkwing says, even someone like Negaduck has his fans. <laughs> and it ends with Launchpad going, that's a good one, DW. <laughs> normally, right. I don't like, normally I don't like episodes that end with the cast laughing like that, but it's, mm -hmm. it's still a pretty funny ending because, you know, <laughs> Negaduck's gonna get pooped on by pigeons. It's great. Um, anyway, that's that's going nowhere fast. I like this episode. Yeah, not I like it too. It, it, like I said, I, to me, it's not in the middle. It's not uh, top tier. It's kind of like that three quarters. So, like, if you're driving, you're looking at your gas tank. You're three quarters. You're not quite yeah. full, but you're not in the middle either. You don't have half a tank. I mean, when it comes to all the ABC episodes, most of them are better than this one. Mm -hmm. Because it's really hard to argue against episodes like, you know, Brush with Oblivion and Negaduck. But this is still really good. It being a Negaduck episode really, really helps it, you know? Mm -hmm. so, so how so, many gas gun canisters are you going to give this one, Mike? Three. You're going to give it three? A little bit above average. Okay, okay. All right. It's uh, solid. Very solid. Uh, I like wanna... the jokes. I think it's fun. You know, Negaduck's in it. Mm -hmm. I can't knock it. Okay, I, I'm going to give it a three as well. Uh, that's what I was planning to give, so I hope people don't think I, I'm just taking the easy way out from going with Mike's score. Uh, but I, I want to give it a three because we already mentioned it. Jim is really coming with the Negaduck voice. I love the music, man, when he's doing that run. When he's running mm -hmm. so fast, that music is just so dope. Um, it has This episode has good flow. Honkers is very, Honkers very important in this one. Gossel is very important. LP is the only one who kind of take a steps back, but he comes back in with jokes throughout the entire episode, you know, from uh, running from the house and we finally finding out how far Darkwing ran, uh, you know, the, the punchline on the jokes uh, at the end of the episode. Uh, yeah, the, going, the, going yeah. forward with Launchpad, not to interrupt, going forward, because this is a later one, this is kind of where Launchpad's going to be, like second to Goslin, more the third, basically they're to crack jokes. yeah. And, you know, and he, like you said, he, he's there to crack jokes. Like, he cracked the joke of, like, how do you expect us to find it? It's not like he's just going to be in a big old building in front of us. And, yeah. boom, there he was, you know. So, LP, even though he takes a step back, he's still 
he's still LP. Yeah. Yeah, he's definitely still LP. The only gripe I have with this, and I'm not going to go on the animation thing that has nothing to do with my gripe. No, it's not. You my gripe the episode. It's not a full nega duck quite. He's not fully developed yet, you know? Yeah, he's getting there, though. He, he's getting there, but he's not quite fully developed. So, like, that's why I think, in my opinion, it's, it's not top tier, you know? But we, but we see how strong of a character he actually is. I mean, he is able to take over St. Canard pretty much by himself. He does need this fearsome five to do that. Mm-hmm. And he's he's brutal. He's mean, you know? And it's, this show is, they have a really good character on their hands. They definitely do. All right. So the, we got. do you want to rate him on this episode or you yeah. want to wait for the next one? Let's rate him on this episode. All right. Go for it, Mike. Yo, boy. Okay. So, Negaduck. <laughs> how, how can you even describe Negaduck? Like... I love Megavolt, you love Quacker Jack, but I think it's hard to argue that Negaduck is probably the most popular Darkwing villain. Mm -hmm. He has so many fans. Like, he comes up a lot when people talk about Negaduck. Most of the most popular episodes are Negaduck episodes. He's such a fantastic character. I can't picture the series without him. Jim does such a great job. I love the red, yellow, and black. It's such a cool color scheme. And by the way, if I haven't mentioned it, that color scheme is based on reverse flash. That's exactly what Tad wanted. Mm -hmm. Um, That's why they colored him those colors, red, yellow, and black. The voice is great. I love that they brought him back in DuckTales last year. Um, I love him. I absolutely love Negaduck. He's just so fantastic. He's so mean. He's such a jerk. And I'm giving him a five. Like I, in my mind, there are only three villains that get fives, and Negaduck is the third one that gets a five. Okay. Well, for me, there's one who got Infinity plus Infinity, and then the other two gets five. So yeah. Negaduck is getting a five. Mm. He, he's getting I, a five for me. He's Jim. This is it. This is where Jim has officially established Negaduck got his own voice. It, it's coming well. Negaduck is really showing his his development. This is it. Where there's no turning back on us with Negaduck now. Yeah, because I'd say, like, in um, Secret Origins, his voice is just angry Darkwing. That's not Negaduck to me, man. <laughs> but in this one, in this one it's, it's, it's basically its own voice. Yeah. It's not Darkwing anymore. It's its own voice. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, there are better Negaduck episodes coming. I mean, the very next one, you know. But this is really where it starts. Mm-hmm. You know, in terms of air date, at least. This is where it starts with him. Yeah, we're not we're not turning back no more with him. That's it. No, it's a wrap. <laughs> I feel like at this point in the writing, everyone has just fallen in love with him. Because mm-hmm. like I said, this is the sixth Negaduck episode already in production order. Yeah. And a lot of them, which is like I said, were written once they brought him back from Justice Ducks, right at one after the other. Darkwing Dabloon, Negaverse, Secret Origins, this one, Dis- Disguise the Limit. They just started pumping out the Negaduck episodes. Mm-hmm. You know. Uh, we got one I'm waiting on too. Uh, Ghoul of my dream. No, not Ghoul of my dreams. Uh, Valentine Ghoul. Valentine Ghoul. Yeah, yeah that one's I, a good one too. I, I love that one. But um, mm-hmm. all right, Mike, go ahead and announce it. What's next? Next, I I really there's no way to argue that the next episode is probably I'm not even gonna say probably is the most popular Darkwing Duck episode of all time. It's the one that's on everyone's top five list. You're, yeah, it it is. You right, Will? Oh, I, there, I can't yeah, debate then, that. <laughs> there's no debating this. This episode is the greatest Darkwing Duck episode of all time. I think it's going to be our most popular episode, personally. Um, I'm already looking forward to that. Okay, no being around the bush. Next week, Life, the Negaverse, and Everything. My personal favorite Darkwing Duck episode of all time. Mm-hmm. Now, it's not my personal favorite, but there, there's no way you could take out the top five. Just mm-hmm. no way. It's impossible. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm going to have a lot to say about this one. Yeah. And I, I know a couple people, it's not their favorite episode, but they still mention it in top five. There's just no way around it. You this cannot is, take this one out of the top five. This is a milestone. After Justice Ducks, this is what we've been building up to. Mm-hmm. Like, we built up to Justice Ducks. Now we're building back up to this one. All right. <laughs> definitely. And we got right. Quack, Quacker Jack. We have the Fearsome Five, Metal Foots. Oh, I can't wait. Okay, okay. Anyway, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's, yeah, let's, yeah, let's stop teasing. Let's stop teasing them. All right. 
All right, so we got that episode coming up next. Uh, guys, you know, if you want to join us, uh, we have a Zoom chat every Saturday with uh, with friends and followers and people who just love Darkwing. We talk Darkwing. We watch Darkwing together. We talk DuckTales. We talk the news. We talk movies. We talk all kinds of things, convention. And, and uh, we actually even plan to maybe to attend a convention if the conventions ever start happening again as yeah. a group, you know, and go support I'm- three cast members or something. So, you're welcome to join yeah. us. And um, if anybody is interested, these start 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And these things could go to as late as 11, 12 o'clock. Uh, like, my... uh, last week, <laughs> last week in four hours. Uh, you tapped out. We went a lot longer. Okay, so you how long did out. you go last week? Uh, I think we went five and a half. There you go. See, so if you can't make it at 8, show up at 9 or 10. We'll still be on. Yeah, we'll still be on. But, yeah, you guys are welcome to join us. Follow the page. We're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. We're on Twitter. Uh, just follow us. We're everywhere. Like Mike said earlier in the podcast, our, you can find us on pretty much any podcast platform. Our YouTube's growing. And by this time, that virtual panel should be out. So we hope you check it out. Uh, I'm not going to say how i'm releasing it on here but it will be on youtube i'm not gonna say if it's full or part one part two i don't know yet but y'all stay tuned yeah We're i mean heck if, heck if you hadn't if you haven't seen it yet here's the advertisement go watch it <laughs> all right guys but we're signing out and make sure stay dangerous have a good night everybody <laughs>